On the first video on this Sharp 58 inch TV repair, we did a little bit of troubleshooting. We discussed taking the flashlight and shining it on the LCD and seeing an image even though we had no backlight. So we started looking into the backlight. We did a quick disassembly of the TV and ended up on the bench doing some testing and decided to change out the surface mount LEDs. So in this video, we'll look into changing out the LEDs and trying to get the strips back working on this 58 inch Sharp TV. So let's get to it. So I'm going to go ahead and try to remove these surface mount diodes, these two surface mount LEDs here in the 9 and 10 location. I'm going to try to solder up some new ones on there and just see how this strip works. And I'll decide if I want to actually replace the strips or just depending on how this works out, I just want to just replace the SMD LEDs. Just that easy. I'm going to go ahead and remove number 10 while I'm at it because it showed a 0.6 volt uh, forward voltage and that is incorrect. It don't have the black speck as this one did, but there we go. And this is that bad one. It definitely had a dark spot in it and the the other bad one it showed about a half to 0. 0.6 volts uh, forward and reverse direction so it is definitely bad but uh kind of an odd failure but this is gonna be my replacements they are three volt 2835 a little bit smaller pad on these for the positive, which is the anode, where these appear to have similar pads for positive and negative, but or anode and cathode. But the way these pads are, I'm gonna just clean them up and put a little bit of solder paste on them, and I think they're gonna be just fine. That's actually, I like the way they did that. I'll line up on that pretty well. Just a little drop here. Well, it takes us just a little bit. If you can see that, I just got just a small little, just a small little drop on here on those pads after cleaning them up. The solder paste should work out well. It's, it's relatively lower heat. So now we'll do number 10. So one thing I believe is a good sign, if you'll see how they both shifted just a tad bit to the left, and that will be for that smaller pad. So that shows that we have the smaller pad, the right orientation, and they shifted almost exactly the same. Push this over. Let's bring the meter over and test. So go back to this one, known good number eight.
Gotta go to seven to eight and we're good. And then from eight to nine, look there, now we're good. And from nine to 10, we're good. I do have to glue these back on. But there we go. Yeah, both of them just a little. Individually. And there we go. I'm going to bring up a power supply at 30 volts. 30 volts should light them up a little bit. I'm going to set it for 40 milliamps. Hey, they all light up. I know they're not all on screen, but they're in series, so you'll be able to tell there. I will turn this around so the, the two we replaced, we'll just do the last three or four actually in camera view. And there we go. That's what we look like. So that's looking really, really good. I think I'm just going to slap this in and uh, we'll go out there and see what it looks like. We'll plug this in and test it out before we decide to put some more silicone back down or double back tape, lock it in place, plug it up, hit the power button, and there we go. Make sure you can see it a little better. That is all the way across. So that is the entire backlight lit up now. Awesome. Our voltage is now about 152.7 and rock solid. And across each individual LED strip, we have 30 30.8630.36, 30.36, 30.42, 30.34, 30.66. So a uh, very well balanced uh, voltage across all five. So the current's regulated very well. So back now after putting the repaired strip back in, of course buying a new strip, replacing it will be the same exact process. I did weigh down the strips so the silicone could adhere. Just pick spots that wasn't already uh, where the silicone was in between the LEDs. Just going to put our double back tape back across before we put our um, reflector in. Just going to continue to go around and put these little standoffs in. It looks like it was a retainer and a standoff all in the one here. Put our filter layer, our diffuser in. After we put our diffusers in, we can now put our, the edges back on. Then we mark top and bottom, left and right. We'll do the top and bottom, and then we'll do the sides. We just always have to use extreme care with the screen. It's very easily broken. So whether I mentioned it or not, I don't know. But before we do put our bezel and screws in on that last step, the board does have to be slid into these plastic holders because we don't have that much room once the bezel's on to get it locked in. You don't have to hook the cables up yet, but you do go ahead and slide them into the white holders before you put your bezel on as we did in that last step. We should be able to pop our power button back on. Go ahead and hook up our ribbon cable to our T-con board, push it down, and the line up line should be almost flush with the edge of the connector there. We also have some little grounding straps. It's like tape, as you see here. This goes to our gold-plated corners on our board. But there's two or three of these across each board. They connect back, stick back on there. And we'll put back on our speaker assembly. 
we just line up a little rubber, our blue rubber grommets. They push in pretty easy. Then our, our wire continues from our wireless board across just as we took it a loose. We have 16 screws to put in the back cover and only one of them's an eyeball. It's got a flange uh, head compared to the rest. There's an S designating where it goes. We'll put the other 16 in. We'll be right back. All right, for the moment of truth, Stand it up, turn it around so you can see it. And look at right here. If you think it would be helpful today, I'll have um, a link in the description of the video that I have some eBay links currently of some of the LED backlights, so at least you get an idea of what they look like. Um, I know some of those sellers may come and go. Um, I'll also have a link to Shop Jimmy because they might get them back in stock. At the time of this video, they did not have them in stock. But I hope you did like the look into this sharp, high sense TV today and the backlights and how easy it is to replace the strips. It's really not that difficult to even replace the LEDs on the strips. So if you wanted to go a lot cheaper route, and save some money. So hopefully this will be a good repair for a friend of mine. And um, if you think this video earned it today, please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.